beginning with the inchcape rock brainstorming question and answers so in this particular for the completing this particular exercise we will be going on to the first page of my textbook of the brainstorming and the answers will be soon posted in a what is in picture format to you the first question is narrate in groups the scene described in the beginning of the poem so as you can see the first question is narrate in groups the scene described in the beginning of the poem so we are going to the first uh, actually where the poem is written look here uh, as you can see her no stir in the air no stir in the sea the ship was well uh, as still she could be her sails from heaven received no motion her keel was steady in the ocean so describing the very first narrative we can see here that there was no movement in the ocean and the ship was steady and she was just Uh, she was not sailing actually she was uh, nowhere in the ocean means in the sea she was still she was not moving so the first scene describes about an inchcape bell that is tied to the inchcape rock and uh, this inchcape bell was there tied by the abbot of aberbrothock who wanted to uh, warn the sailors who passed by now he uh, did that because during the storms the sailors were unable to see a perilous rock the inchcape rock so abbot of abbotrothock thought that by installing one such warning bell i could save many lives so this was his idea behind tying the inchcape bell to the inchcape rock okay now we have the next question see here complete the following statements the first is The abbot of Aberbrothock placed a bell on the Inchcape Rock because he was a very kind-hearted and warm person who wanted to save lives of sailors during the storms. Okay, this was his idea. Now the second one: the mariners were grateful to the abbot of Aberbrothock because he had the abbot of Aberbrothock had tied an Inchcape bell which saved their lives during storms, and they blessed him. The result of the thick haze that covered the sky was that the rowers, the Ralph the rowers, uh, sailors, his teammates, could not see the land in the dark. The D one, the rower, in frustration, pulled his hair and cursed himself because because of his foolish and dumb cruel uh, what he said deed. He had cut the inchcape rock which he could not see, and he had uh, his ship had been wrecked on that inchcape rock. Now the next question given below are the events that give the theme of the poem in a jumbled form means here options are given to you which are in jumbled form you have to put them in proper order according to their occurrences now what things happen first you have to we have to discuss that now if you can see here see uh, the first line here is the waves are so small that they did not move enough to ring the bell at the inchcape rock this is the first option now what after this do you see here Okay. Now the second option is the abbot of Aberbrothock had placed a bell on the Buoy Rock. This one, the B one, is the second one in the occurrences. What happened next? The next is Ralph bent over the boat. We have seen that Ralph saw the bell and he was very happy uh, with his wicked ideas and he moved to cut the bell. Then we have. There was a thick haze spread over the atmosphere. The C one is the fourth one. And the last is Sir Ralph cursed himself in despair and in frustration tore his hair. So this is the sequence. I hope you have understood the sequence. The first is A, then you have B, then you have D, then C, and lastly you have E. Now the third one. Describe the qualities of the abbot of Aberbrothock in your own words. The qualities of Aberbrothock are: he was benevolent, he was big-hearted, he was inspirational, wise, cooperative, and humanitarian. Means he thought for the welfare of the people. Okay, we are going to discuss the next part. Jealousy is the most incurable, uh, incurable defect. Justify your, justify your answer. Now, what do you know? See here. Uh, Jealousy plays an important role in the poem. The rower cut the inchcape bell as he was jealous of the abbot of Aberbrothock. When abbot of Aberbrothock tied the inchcape bell, sailors were blessing him. This uh, this particular sailors blessed him 
as he was saving thousands of uh, lives okay when the rover raft or rover came across the bell he was uh, he had a wicked plan, uh, plan in his mind that he is going to cut the bell now what why did he do this this was only out of jealousy when people are jealous of other people's good deeds they do something to harm them and out of this they do something some foolish acts okay so these things are seen even in our day to day life we as students uh, mostly we are jealous of our friends and we some of us not all of us some of us do some foolish things to uh, what to say destroy their work or um, many foolish things so this thing should not be done so jealousy here plays an important role and jealousy is a defect incurable means it cannot be cured now the next question here but the rover's mirth was wickedness explain this line in your own words with the help of the poem now as we can study that that stanza look here but the boy of the inchcape bell was seen a darker speck on the ocean green sir ralph the rover walked his deck and he fixed his eyes on the darker speck he saw the inchcape bell and he fixed his eyes on it and what happened see here he felt the cheering power of spring it made him whistle it made him sing his heart was mirthful to excess but the rover's mirth was wickedness so here we see that the rover rag the rover sir rag the rover was not happy actually he he was happy but there was a very um, quirky happiness in his mind and he wanted to do something dangerous something evil plan was cooking inside his mind his eye was on the inchcape float quoth he said uh, my men put out the boat and row me to the inchcape rock and i'll play the about of our growth rock so here in this particular line we see that the bird but the rover's mirth was of wickedness his uh, idea or the wish he had in his mind was of wickedness his idea was to cut the inchcape bell which he did by the end of the next uh, quatrain now look here what does this mean see it means that when sir ralph the rover moved towards the inchcape bell he planned planned to cut the inchcape bell so he could no one could bless the abbot of abbrotha so he cut the inchcape bell and so here no one could be saved and there will be curses for the abbot of abbrotha this was the whole idea behind sir ralph the rover's actions now as we move towards hell uh, what what's given here some words in the poem are related in were in different parts of a ship or a mariner's life what are mariners mariners those people who work on ships and move in oceans and seas given below are meanings of those terms identify the word helps in steering the ship is the it's the keel uh, i had already told you what a keel is keel is a small part below the ship okay this particular keel okay it uh, it uh, what is it balances the ship it avoids it to uh, balance on the water it does not let it collide on the either sides then the lowest part of the ship here is the deck next is floating object that shows direction that is the buoy another name for a ship that is vessel sinking sound that is the gurgling sound okay as we continue now a4 is ballad what is a ballad a ballad is a song that tells a story and it can be dramatic funny or romantic as earlier explained what is a ballad ballad is about uh, it's a traditional type of uh, folklore verse which narrates a uh, strong associations with communal dancing so why do you write ba- ballad here see i told you that ballad are songs of inspiration the work of great deeds of a particular uh, person are passed on from one generation to another in the form of ballad okay some information is given here which all of you can read through the textbook now we move on to the next question that is select the appropriate figure of speech from the given box uh, given box below and complete the table a number of figures of speech or quoting devices are given here you have metaphor alliteration repetition personification inversion simile apostrophe and onomatopoeia so some lines are given to you and we have to find out which uh, example is which figure of speech sir ralph the rover tore his hair the figure of speech used here is alliteration the line uh, explanation the close repetition of consonant sound at the beginning of the words so what are the beginning of the words it is r or 
r okay so these consonant sounds now the next is no stir in the sea no stir in the air no stir in the sea so which which is the figure of speech the figure of speech here is repetition what what which words are repeated here see no stir is repeated twice now next on a boy in the storm it floated and swung here we have inversion the word order is changed or inverted what should be the correct order it should be it floated and swung on a boy in the storm so this particular is inversion the next is down sank the bell with a gurgling sound so gurgling sound where in which type of figure of speech do we use sounds to describe the particular sentence oh, is anomotopia the devil below was ringing his knell so the ringing sound of the knell so this particular figure of speech also is anomotopia now the next is the ship was as still as she could be so here the figure of speech used this personification as the ship is has been given a human attribute and uh, the poet is calling her as she so next is on the deck the rover takes his stand here the figure of speech is inversion as the correct order of this particular sentence should be the rover takes his stand on the deck so now we have lastly o oh christ and the figure of speech here is apostrophe as it is showing some uh, kind of emotion here sudden emotion here now the next morning students students today we will do uh, discuss about the brainstorming and the critical appreciation of the poem in shape rock by robert sawi so very first we have seen the brainstorming question and answers now we are going to continue with the critical appreciation so the points to be discussed for critical appreciation are title poem poet theme style poetic devices use the sub feature and the moral message and lastly we have the opinion so first let's talk about the title The title of the poem is very significant as it uh, represents a lot of things, and that lot of things are it represents the struggle between the good versus the evil. Inchcape Rock here, the Inchcape Pen, uh, is the uh, what do you say? It's the symbol of goodness and kind-heartedness of the Abbot of Abbotsford. Okay, it uh, actually shows the virtues of a particular person. Now, next is the poem. What do we know about the poem? The poem is in the narrative form. It has 17 quatrains. Quatrains means uh, four lines. A set of four lines is known as quatrain. There are 17 quatrains. Okay. The poem is in a form of the ballad. Ballad here is a poem which uh, which is written to appreciate somebody's good deeds, great deeds, or deeds which have uh, affected the humans. So the poem is about the humanitarian deeds. Uh, done by the abbot of Abbotsford it is also a, a classic example of the struggle between the good versus and the evil now let's see what else the poem is in a lo long narrative form long narrative form is there is a lot of description also it gives a clear and vivid pictures for the readers to understand now next let's talk about the poet the poet here is robert sawi who is famous for his romanticism he was a, a, what do you say he was a old school romantic poet what as do you know about him robert sawi was a versatile poet he has written many poems he has written many ballads he has written lyrical poetry he has written sonnets and etc he also has written uh, prose work which includes novels uh, what do you say then you have dramas uh, you have essays you have translations reviews there are many things the uh, famous part about uh, what is the most important part about this poet robert sawi was that he used poetic justice or also known as the supernatural element and that means his poems have a moral message in it now let's talk about the theme the theme of the poem as we have earlier discussed in the explanation of the poem is that the theme of this particular poetry is uh, the battle between the good versus the evil the theme can be jealousy theme can be as you so so shall you reap means whatever your actions shall be the consequences should be according to your actions so this particular poem the theme is between uh, what is said two particular uh, virtues i say uh, one virtue and one vice that is one good uh, act versus the bad act okay 
So next we have the style. Now how is the style of the poem? The poem is written in a very simple language, understandable language. Okay, let's see the next one that is the style. The style is that this particular poem is written in 70 long quatrains. Quatrains here, as earlier explained that quatrains are four lines. There are sets of 17 sets of, of each of four lines. This is the poem is in a long narrative form. Now what else do you know? The poetic devices. See, each poet uses a number of poetic devices to convey his message to the readers. Here also Robert Saudi has used a number of poetic devices which include personification, alliteration, repetition, onomatopoeia and inversion. The examples to give you some are that in the first portrait we see the poet has uh, what is it, described the ship as she. He has given a quality of a human to an inanimate object. Then you have alliteration. Alliteration, there are a lot of examples in the uh, this what you say, particular uh, book. Okay, she steers her uh, self uh, in the course of the Scotland, uh, Scotland shore. So here we have the consonant sound of S repeated twice. Then you have repetition. No stir in the air, no stir in the sea. Here the words no stir, no stir are repeated twice. Then you have your repetition. Then you have onomatopoeia. Here you have two examples of the onomatopoeia in the given in the poem. One is the gurgling sound of a sinking bell, and second is the sound of the sound of the knell by the uh, devil. Lastly, you have inversion. Yes, uh, in every word there are some kind of inversion here. So in this particular poetry also many a times. As we have shown in the brainstorming, there are particular lines where there are inverted sentences. The order of the sentences has been changed. For example, see here we have on a boy in the storm it floated and swung. Okay. So here uh, the uh, phrase of the sentence has been changed up. Now let's see at the special feature of the poem. What is the special feature of this particular poem is that the poet has used narrative method with usage of images. Images here means the poetic devices to express this idea. Here we see that this particular poetry is between two, one virtue and one vice, that is good versus evil. Okay. So what is and also you can see the usage of supernatural element in a particular uh, as you continue in the poem we have seen that out of somewhere uh, nowhere uh, suddenly the haze comes, the mist comes, and uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, the supernatural, the ship is moving, there is no movement in the air, still the ship, ship is moving towards the shore. This is the supernatural element, introduction of the supernatural element. Then you have the moral message. What is the moral message of the poetry? There are two types of moral messages in the poem. The first is as we show, so shall you read. And the second is that all good actions shall be rewarded and all bad actions sh shall be punished. This is the moral message of the poem. And lastly, they have your opinion. What is the opinion about this poem? The first opinion is that I like this poem. The second is that from this poem I get the message that we should always do good actions because good actions will always be rewarded. But we have to uh, what is it, keep this in the mind that if you do any bad actions, it will be punished. No matter how uh, what you say, how rich you are, how poor you are, smart, it has nothing to do with it. Your bad actions will be punished eventually. Compose some lines. Hope you like the uh, lines composed by me. The wonderful sea opened her arm. Her vastness and her majestic appeal works like charm. The waves go up so high, I sometimes feel they might touch the sky. All the creatures feel so happy and gay, they somehow each time move away to play. I once jumped into uh, fetch some wealth, but oh, I could not reach its depth. So thank you children, uh, now the here we stop for the today's lecture.